What's going on, YouTube? This is your boy, Forever Brandon T. We're coming back to you guys with another amazing video on Raphael Sadiq. Guys, yes, Raphael Sadiq is one of my favorite artists. If you guys know him from the group Tony, 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 guys, which is a great uh, selling group back in the early 90s, guys. Uh, they were discovered back then in the late 80s to the early 90s, guys. Uh, they were a, a world award-winning group. They had hits played on the radio nonstop. Uh, Raphael Sadiq has written, recorded, and produced music, you know, for other artists. Uh, he is a great singer, songwriter. Um, his album, Jimmy Lee, guys, I think is probably the best R&B soul album I've heard this year. Um, you know, just it's just his angelic his angelic uh, uh, sound is just amazing on here. Uh, and I just really, really love, I really, really love it. It's been a while since he has came out with a solo project. Guys, uh, the last time he came out with a project was in 2011, Stone Rolling. Um, if you remember that album, guys, it was it was an okay album. I'm not going to say it was my best album from him, but I think that Jimmy Lee is probably my favorite album from him in a long time, guys. It has 13 tracks. Uh, guys, uh, it's just an amazing body of work that I really feel like you guys can really, really get to. Um, the first song, Sinner's Prayer, just talks about, you know, him being the sinner, but, you know, asking the Lord to forgive him for his sins and, and you know, praying and things like that. You know, it's just a very, very deep song, I feel like. It's just a perfect way to start off the album. I know he has soul when he does music. He, he has soul, okay? And he brought you know, uh, a lot of energy, you know, for the for the first song or the, or the first part of the album, which was great. I love it. I love it. I love it. You know, I just love the realness of it. You know, the realness of the sound, just the nostalgic of him because, you know, he makes a lot of good music. And the song itself, Sinner's Prayer, is probably my favorite on the album. One of my favorites on the album. This is really, really good. So Ready, which is the next song. This song kind of, uh, you know, was giving me a little Prince vibe. It kind of had a little funk to it. And it just gave me a little bit of Prince. And I loved it. It just was just, it's just amazing. He just talked about he's so ready for, you know, the girl that he's with. And um, I, I really, really got into the song. I really, really got into just the song as a whole. It's a whole vibe. And I love it. It's just really, really good. Um, the next song is called "The World." This World is Drunk. Uh, you know, uh, it's an amazing song. Just talks about the world being so focused on, you know, partying and so focused on, you know, drinking and doing things like that. But then they're, they're too drunk to realize what's going on around them. And I really, really got into that. You know, uh, I think it's just I think it's a true fact about what is going on in the world today. You know how the world is so polluted. It just talks about how the world is polluted, you know, with drinking, with narcotics, with, you know, uh, just. Uh, 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 everything that's going on, they're, they're so blind to see what's going on around them because they're so busy, you know, partying and, you know, not thinking about what's going on in their life, you know, their day to day lives. And I really, really like it. This song also kind of gave me a little bit of Prince too, you know, because it has just, you know, he kind of gave me a little bit of Prince with the with the music choices, you know. It just has a a a a a a, a nice blippy sound to it that's just really really futuristic. It just talks about what's going on. The next song is "Something Keeps Calling." Anybody be right? 
I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Just, just you know, uh, 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 something keeps calling. You know, he hit that, and I love it. I really like how he did that in the song. It's, you know, it just, it's another good song on here that I just really, really, you know, enjoy. King Small. I think he really did something different with the song. You know, he was shouting, you know, uh, he's just talking about how kings fall. And I just really, really got into that. I just, uh, you know, really love the lyrics on him when he says, the supplier, my provider, uh, all those things. I want you to be me. I want you to be my. I love it. I really, really like how he did it. It just had a great concept. It's a great concept for this song, and I just really, really liked it. The next song is I'm Feeling Love. I'm feeling love kind of reminded me of uh, a little bit of Raheem Devine and a little bit of D'Angelo. You know, I was just getting that vibe, you know, of it uh, from from the song, and I just really liked it. Really, really liked the vibe of the song. It kind of was weird but blippy. You know, it was angelic, and that's what I liked about you know uh, I'm feeling love because it has a nice little sound to it. The next song is My Walk. He just, you know, talks about all the things that he's been through, you know, on his journey, on his walk. You know, he just talks about things that he's he's seen overseas. You know, uh, he just, you know, really, really breaks it down with my walk. And it's just a nice little song. It's like two minutes and 16 seconds. And it's good. Uh, Belongs to God, which was a nice, um, nice little interlude or a nice little song featuring Reverend E. Baker. You know, and I really, really got into that. You know, it was very, you know, an old school gospel. It wasn't my favorite of the album, but I really got into just what, what it was about. Um, the next song after that was Glory to the Vein. No, he he talks about a lot. Even though it has a dark undertone to this song, I really, really got into just the importance of it. You know, he talks about how he lost a brother to AIDS. He talks a little bit about, you know, him going through that and, you know, um... He talks uh, um, a little bit about, you know, his heart, you know, um, going into a lapse, you know, uh, um, you know, he talks about himself, you know, him finding himself. He just goes into spirituality, you know, he just talks about a war that is going on, you know, spiritually. And I just really, really got into that. I just really, really got into just this album as a whole, you know, of what he is coming from. You know, because uh, he's a very, very, very great singer and songwriter. And he's a deep, he's deep. He comes from a deep background. And, I, uh, you know, Raphael, that's my guy. This is my first review on him, which I'm also excited to give this first review on Raphael Sadiq. Because he's amazing. He's one of my favorite artists. Then we get into Rikers Island. Rockers Island has a great message in there, um, and, you know, uh, and I just really, really got into just what that song was about. And the Rockers Island uh, um, little interlude, you know, had a nice little poem, you know, uh, about, you know, society and, you know, things that are going on in the world today. 
Uh, and I was just really, really got into that. Then we get into the last song, which is Rear View. And you know who I think was in this song? I feel like Kendrick Lamar was in the song. You can you you correct me if I'm wrong, but when I like when it, when it got into that part, uh, um, how can I change the world? But I can't change myself. You know, I feel like that was Kendrick Lamar. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like that was him. Um, uh, other than that, you know, this song talks about your life is in the rear view. You know, it just talks about you know uh, a stepping stone. It talks about uh, your life is, you know, in your hands. And how can you change the world when you can't change yourself? How can you look at others and not look at yourself? And that's what I, you know, picked up from the song. That's what I got from the song. And, you know, he had a, a nice little dark undertone in his voice in the song. It was different. And um, that's why I feel Sadiq, you guys. He's deep. He's coming from a deep. I think this is probably his most personal body of work to date. Uh, he's amazing, guys. Like I said, if you guys don't know who he is, please check out his stuff from Tony, Tony, Tony. You know, uh, he's amazing, guys. He's one of my favorites, all-time favorites. Uh, really got into it. And this album as a whole, I feel like it's probably one of the best R&B albums of the year. The main one that I've heard this year that really, really stands out, you know, uh, just the message of it all. I just really, really got into it. This is your boy Forever Brandon TV coming back to you guys with another video.